Let's define the problem statement. A software company develops educational apps for schools, each requiring custom features. As the number of features grows, the process of adding them to apps becomes complex and hard to manage. This complexity makes it tough to update apps with new features and fix issues quickly. The company needs a simpler way to add and update features in apps without affecting the whole system, ensuring that apps stay up to date and cater to the unique needs of each school. The solution must allow the company to easily introduce new features as their product evolves. Welcome back. Welcome back to our channel. Where we simplify complex software problems. Today, we are tackling a challenge many developers face. Managing and updating features in educational apps. Let's dive in. Let me explain the problem first. In the world of educational app, one size does not fit all schools needs customized feature and as our app grows so does the complexity of managing these customization also we need a, a smarter way to handle this growth stick with me as we solve this step by step we know that school have unique needs and our apps must reflect that however adding a new quiz module or an interactive map directly into our apps go making things messy it is time consuming and error prone. Here is what happens when we hard code a new feature into our apps. Look at this, here is Fangled Web. It is a recipe Fangled for headaches when we need to change something. For here is the step three, conceptualizing a solution. What if we could request a feature and it just appears without worrying about the how? Imagine a magic box that gives us the feature fully prepared. This is what we are aiming for. Am I right? I hope we all agree with it. All right, so here is the step three. First iteration towards the solution. We are creating a feature creator class. It is a class that will handle the making of our features. For now, it is simple. But watch it evolve gradually to build the monument. I hope you like it step by step progress Keep, in, keep on going now. Hi, so let's come back again on step four. And that is step is refining the approach. Now, uh, initially, if you remember, we have created three methods, three feature method. So these three methods, if you look carefully to these features, you will definitely see that it has some pattern. Pattern, I mean to say, that these all three feature method have something common, common structure. And in general, if you see the best coding practice, especially in object oriented programming language, you will easily understood that uh, it can be, I mean, you can refine this code structure <clears throat> by inheriting the common part into the base class and the Changes which these methods are uh, accommodating or <clears throat> those change part pushed to the derived class. In general, that is uh, that could be implemented using the abstraction. So in the next step, we are moving in that direction, right? So create something like abstract class and do some, some modification, some improvement in our code. So look that angle in this step and let's come back again in the step next step where we are supposed to solve or go to in that abstract class direction okay so see you in the next segment again all right so in this step my total focus is abstracting the creation process transition to using a single method with a parameter to specify the feature type instead of multiple methods what if we had one method that took the type of features we wanted as a parameter you can easily visualize that this simplifies our feature creator even further, right? And let me share you one image here, which will give you intuition to, I mean, see that how this method will uh, create a feature type of product according to the type provided in this method. Okay. So if you look at this image, you can easily see that this create feature class have a type and this type, according to the type, our this implemented method will create a particular product of feature type, feature uh, product, 
just like uh, there are two like feature module and then feature map interactive map right these two type of product they can generate and they will return from this create feature method feature creator method right what is the advantage here is that now your structure is extendable if even if you get some additional requirement in future where you supposed to to provide more new features to support in your software that you can do very easily right very easily you can extend your this class to the next level of supporting the features and that is what we are expected to do right that is what we are expected as in to do in our software that is what our requirement was right so in this step what we did we have created abstract class abstract feature class and that feature class is i mean there are different kind of concrete class of this abstract class according to your feature here there are two features you have defined module and then interactive map and this feature class i mean feature product will be returned from future feature creator method according to the type okay so all right welcome back so uh, in this step let's look at the final code which i have shared you here let's try to illustrate the code and understand the implementation that you reached until now you can see that we have created a method that is creating a product for us without knowing the internal details of the product our structure is equipped with the followings it's elegant it's simple and it's perfectly solves our problem we can easily add new feature without touching the rest of our apps right in addition to that above if you look the uml diagram now i'm requesting you to compare this uml diagram and this code you can see that almost everything we mention in uml diagram is already achieved in our code without even knowing the design pattern without even knowing the i mean pattern up front we have achieved at the same spot where a person who knows design pattern and then solve this problem will reach it's a beauty of your best practice follow right that you just followed the best practices in your code and you reached at the same spot where you will reach even if you know the design pattern and that is what my logic says like design pattern is nothing new it's just a best practices followed in your code so at last congratulation to all of us for achieving our second design pattern trophy in our award list i hope you will continue with me in this journey to learn all the awards as a design pattern in our kitty list and we will grow our award list by adopting these patterns in this fundamental way which will whatever the way it would be easy for every developer okay so that is the best way to learn the design pattern in my opinion and that is what we are following here so let's come again join me in the next segment of video thank you thank you for completing this video and i hope that you definitely have learned something which will help you in your system design interview hope to see you in next video with new concept and skills needed for the system design interview by then keep learning keep improving and keep sharing your knowledge